most of my teenage life, I was running. Running from one place to the next, from one school to another. It took me close to 25 years to stop running. But before I tell you I stopped running, I would like to tell you where I'm coming from. I hail from a small town in Kenya known as Kisumu, a place that is laced with so much tradition. In my town today, if my sister died, I will be forced to marry the husband just to appease my sister's spirit. If wives lost their husbands, they will be forced into sex with their husband's brothers just to cleanse the home. And, and uh, women in my, in, my, in my town do not have a voice and they're meant to be submissive and their opinion do not count. I was telling you I was running. I'm back to the race. When I got to my third school, I wanted something so bad. I wanted, I, I could barely sleep at night. I wanted a boy to fall in love with so that I could prove my mates wrong to feel normal like any other person. I wanted to prove to the world that I was normal and the teachers just didn't like me and it was all a fallacy. I swore never to notice girls anymore. I swore never to write any notes, but it wasn't long before I noticed Lola, a soft-spoken, curvy girl who sat behind me in our classroom. Fast forward. The day I decided to write a note to Lola, that was the day I was sent home for gross misconduct. No one really wanted to understand that I was just being sincere to my feelings and I was just expressing myself in the best way I could. Nyanza province became really small for me and every school I could go to, there was someone who knew my story or someone in another school who would bring my story to my school. And I couldn't, I had to go to four schools in my secondary education. That means every year I was in a different school. I thought it's good to stop running and I decided to go to school in the neighboring country of Uganda. But come to think of it, I was running yet again. I was running from my own self. I was running from the society that treated homosexuality as blasphemy. I was running from my parents who thought I was being habitually rebellious. I was running from my aunties who treated my sexual orientation as a curse. I was running from my grandparents who thought I was being just psychotic and from a country that viewed me as immoral and felonious. And after, after high school, I decided, after college, I decided to join a mainstream organization that dealt with um, LGBT issues so that I could learn, I could try to learn more about LGBT issues. And then there was this one time when I was seated in the office and I heard some noises coming from the clinic in our uh, office. And going to check out what was happening, there was this gay guy called Kevin who was in a serious argument with one of my colleagues. And um, on trying to find out what was happening, my colleague had made a comment that Kevin was dressed inappropriately, not like a man. But what, what amazed me was how Kevin stood up to himself and he was not going to be brought down. He was not going to let my colleague get over him. And he was fine being who he was. And he said, I'm gay, so what are you going to do about it? I'm going to dress the way I want to dress. And I was standing there in awe, like, oh, really? What have I been doing hiding from the world? Why have I been running away? And it's from that time that I decided I'm not going to run away. And true to my word, I have never ran. I went back home to Kisumu, but I wasn't going to Kisumu without a vision. I was going to claim my space. I was going to claim for my rights, and I was going to 
make LBQ issues listen to. In my organization today, where I am the director and we're dealing with LBQ issues, we are currently coming up with a program to bring the LBQ mothers together and form a support group for the children and prepare the children for the challenges that they're going to face in life, maybe because of having an LBQ mother and even for the parents themselves so that they can be prepared for the discrimination they might face and all the other threats that might come from the family. I believe that no child deserves to be on the tracks running, not even running from their sexual orientation like I did. And the earlier we prepare them for such challenges, the better. Thank you.